Welcome to GSA Expo once again. My name is Carol Slag, and I am from the Greater Southwest Acquisition Center, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm a contracting officer, and I'm actually in Schedule 84, the law enforcement section. And what I'd like to do is spend just a couple minutes talking to you about cooperative purchasing, just give you a brief outline. The cooperative purchasing right now applies to two different schedules, Schedule 70, the IT schedule, and also Schedule 84. Schedule 70 started in fiscal year 2002, and Schedule 84 came aboard later in FY09. So there's also a consolidated schedule that we have. If a contractor has more than one schedule, they can be on our consolidated schedule. There's certain SINs or special item numbers on that schedule that apply. The IT schedule or the IT special item numbers do apply to that as well. And this is a, also a voluntary program. It can be, the, the contractor can decide whether they want to participate or not. The difference with this program is it is specific to each schedule item number. Every schedule has or special item number. Each schedule has the different categories, subcategories of the schedule, and the contractor can decide yes to one special item number and no to another, whereas the other programs are contract-wide. So they, so they may have some special item numbers. They say yes, they'll participate, and others they'll say no. The scope of this is again Schedule 70 and Schedule 84. Eligible users are state and local governments, tribal governments from all 50 states. It's voluntary on both sides. On this, it's uh, contractors again, with the, as with the 1122, they can decide whether to accept the order. It's a case by case basis. Same thing with the State and locals, you can decide whether to participate or not. It doesn't have to be all or none. These are some of the special item numbers that belong under Schedule 70, and we'll cover that more in detail this afternoon in our full-length program. There's, this is the, the it, information technology. It has leasing. It has satellite software licenses. There's a whole gamut of information technology in this one. There's a few more special item numbers. It also does the HSPD and identity access. The card readers are included. Schedule 84 is such a large schedule that it's divided into five attachments and each of those attachments have special item numbers. Attachment one is marine craft and assorted products and services that go with that. Attachment two is firefighting. And three is alarm and signal systems. There's a wide variety here. Facility management, protective services. This is where we have the guard services. We have police officers. We have alarms and signal systems. We have energy saving total solutions all types of products and services that are put together as a total solution so you can go to one place and get everything. That's a little bit more of attachment three. Attachment four is special purpose clothing, firefighting, rescue, police officers, any type of hazmat uh, clothing that would, that would be needed. Attachment five is law enforcement services. That includes so much body armor, restraining equipment, canine training, canine detection, search and rescue, night vision equipment. There's several things, bomb disposal, hazardous material, first responder equipment, firearms, several things, aircraft armoring, armored vehicles, we have a lot of training now on Schedule 84, law enforcement security training, defensive driving, surveillance, several different new and new SINs, special item numbers that have come on board. We have sales for both special uh, schedules, 70 and 84. If you notice the first four years, that's when we had it just on 
70, and then the big jump is when 84 came on board. And fiscal year 11, that's up to the first half, so we're way on track to meet our goals there and exceed what we had before. One thing with this program is the ordering procedures. This is completely between the contractor and the customer. GSA does not get involved, so it's like a, a, an open task order is a new contract between the two, between the state and local and the, customer, and the uh, contractor. We encourage you to use our ordering procedures, which are in the Federal Acquisition Regulation, Part 8.4, you can use your own procedures. You can incorporate our terms and conditions by putting that in your contract. You can add state and local requirements, but it must not conflict with what our requirements are on our schedule. Source of funding can be any type. It can be grant funding. It can be contract. There's some exceptions from the cooperative purchasing. One is the prompt payment. If you have your own statewide, you can use that in a, if it's better than ours, or you can go with what we have on our contract. The disputes clause, as I stated earlier, it is separate. It's a contract between the state and local and the contractor, so GSA does not get involved. If there's any disputes, you'd work that out between the two of you. Patent indemnity clause is excluded as well. And any terms and conditions that are unique to the government would be excluded from your contract. State and local preference programs, if you have something where you buy in-state or any other preference for your contract that is not affected, you can use that. Here's a website we have to give you more information about cooperative purchasing, gsa.gov forward slash cooperative purchasing. There's a lot of information there that you can use to answer more questions.